Hello, I'm David Gilmore, known as LDS Prepper. You can watch over 500 videos at ldsprepper.com on all aspects of preparedness, being off-grid, water filtration, gardening, and so forth. There'll be a link down below, but just go to ldsprepper.com. For those of you who have a wood-burning stove in your home, you know sometimes, especially as you first started up in the beginning of the year, you get a lot of smoke in the house, or even as you light fires during the winter, you get smoke in the house. Today I'm going to show you how I build a smokeless fire in my wood-burning stove. Before you can build a smokeless fire or any kind of fire, you need to have some wood. And I did a previous video on how I split my wood easily, quickly, and safely, and can save your fingers from getting chopped because we don't even use a hatchet. So I'll ha I have a link uh, up above this video so you can see how I cut this uh, soft wood to make my kindling. Uh, my wife purchased this wood stand here and then she made the box inside and so I have the fuel the big wood down in the bottom I've got my larger kindling and then or, or, or my tender really right here and my kindling over here and then of course you get the bark that comes off the wood so I have it in a box over here so we can use that that's uh, great for burning here in the in the wood stove so make sure you got your wood split watch that other video on how to split kindling and tinder the quick, easy, and safe way. Just to save some time, I already gathered my wood here and I'm gonna show you how I build a smokeless fire. First of all, it's kind of like an upside down fire. I'll take my large wood, which I usually put on the top, and uh, I'll put it right here on the bottom. So there's a, a, ho a hole round. This is a hardwood here. I'm just gonna stick it down here because what we're gonna do is we're gonna build the fire from the top and let it burn down and we'll already have our fuel here so it'll make it much easier. Then I'm going to take my uh, smaller split wood and put that in here and I'm just stacking it in whatever whatever fits. Okay so I've, I'm going from larger to smaller then I've got some more split wood which is I show in the other video how I split this and I'm just going to stack that in here and uh, sometimes what you'll need to do is just kind of do a little cross here because they, they kind of want to fall out so, so that they hold each other on. Leave a little air, air space if you can in here so the air can get through. Then I've just got some uh, uh, actually uh, pine paneling here that uh, my daughter took out of her house and so we're going to use that in here if we can. Here's some wood that I don't know, it's just scrap wood. And we just don't like throwing things out. Uh, we want to use them up, repair them, uh, you know, make them last longer. So uh, even though she took the wood, the, the paneling out of her house, we hey, said, hey, we'll take all that. And so we have the paneling. Uh, for example, I walked by this morning and found this in the kitchen trash, so I'm going to use that. Uh, we had some pizza last night for dinner on paper plates. Friday night is uh, dinner and a movie night. Uh, so uh, I'm just going to use this here. And we just try to save our resources, because if you don't have to buy it, you can spend money on something else. So I'm just going to use the paper plate here. I like to... Uh, just kind of crumpling it up, making it ridges. Here's another one from last night. Probably has a little uh, meat fat on there. And I'm just gonna stick uh, paper. Now, this is an old calendar that my wife had from 2020. And uh, instead of throwing this out in the trash, I just keep it down here below. And we just use it uh, during the winter to uh, light our fires. Now, we've never had to buy paper just because we keep it. So that's what I would recommend that you do is just be more frugal with the things that you have and your money will go farther and you'll find resources that you didn't realize that you had. Uh, for example, down here is a catalog. Instead of throwing the catalog out a couple of years ago, uh, we just used it there. Okay, so I'm just going to fill this up. And what's going to happen, the theory here, is that 
right now I can actually hear the wind blowing down through the stovepipe because it's windy outside, but um, and which would cause the smoke to come into the house. But by lighting the fire up here, it's going to heat this up immediately and, and cause a draft to cause the smoke to go up instead of out into the house. So this is a good day to do it because we've got wind outside and we'll see if that works. Well, yes, we have matches and we have lighters, but uh, I'll tell you what, this will last you about three or four years in lighting stoves. At least it does for us and it's quite convenient. So um, I just light this up and I'll just kind of go in the back here and try to catch the paper in the back on fire as much as I can. And then just kind of partially close the door. I have a latch on mine, so I, I stop it right before the latch locks in. And you can see absolutely smokeless fire here. No smoke at all. And what this is going to do, or hopefully what we'll do, and it's been working well for us since we've been doing this, is that this paper will burn down and then it'll catch the uh, kindling on fire. You can already see that some of that pine is already on fire. And then that kindling will catch the tinder on fire, the soft wood. And then that will uh, now start creating uh, coals. And then that will start uh, catching the larger tinder and then the, the fuel on fire. We're just going to let this burn here for a while. I'm not going to touch it. If it goes out, it goes out. I'll let you know. But uh, usually you, it takes about 10 minutes before I move this door to the next uh, less air intake and uh, you know, close it a little bit further. So let's give it about five or 10 minutes and uh, actually I'll start my watch here so we can have a good idea how long it'll be till we come back to the camera. Okay, let's let it sit for a few minutes. Okay, that is looking really, really good. Uh, all the paper is burned, it's burned the, the pine. We're, we're down to the, uh, the tinder and so I'm going to go ahead and close this up one more little loop. So you notice how the, 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 the uh, flame changes. It's because the air intake flow changes. I want to get as much air intake in from here from the bottom, let it burn from the bottom. And I'm just kind of moving that closed a little bit. I don't want to see any smoke in there. So once I see some smoke, I'll back it off just a bit. Um, probably messing with this a little bit more than I need to. As far as tools, boy, I have found that the thing that I use the most is the gloves. I use these gloves as I, I reach in there a lot and grab things. So uh, I recommend a very high quality glove. I'll have some links down below uh, for the gloves that I use. And the thing I use the next most is this uh, ash can and the, the scoop. We use this you know, almost every day. If there's hot ashes in there from the night before, we'll let that sit there and use that, that resource that we've already created to help start the next fire. So this is looking really, really good. I'm gonna go ahead and close this down all the way. And I can hear the stove heating up. It's kind of creaking. I can hear the metal heating up. Um, I'm looking in here once I close this. Do I see any smoke? No, I don't see any smoke. That means there's sufficient oxygen in there for this wood to burn completely. So that was less than, well, that was seven minutes right now from start to finish here. And I've got everything closed down and working on building some really good coals in here. Once this burns down, it'll probably take about 20 minutes or so. Then I'll start putting some uh, large logs on there from the bottom of the wood rack. It, uh, the, the big fuel is already in there. So if I happen to leave and I'm taking care of some other things here and, I've, and uh, it's been several minutes, the fuel is already in there. I don't have to come back here and restart a fire because I didn't have the, the big logs on there already. Uh, there's absolutely no smoke smell in here at all. And we've got a great fire going here. If it dies down just a little bit, just open up the, the, the oxygen and you can see it uh, kind of uh, reignite that wood there. Uh, so let me show you something else. 
it was just a few minutes and now we have these fans up here blowing and I'm doing another video right now to find out if these fans are really beneficial or if they're just a gimmick. So make sure you uh, mark this video and you uh, subscribe to this channel to find out whether these fans here, these non-electric fans, are a gimmick or, or, or if they're worth your money. So it's been about 17 minutes now. I still have the door not completely sealed yet. I got some of the oxygen, oxygen going in there. You can see all the paper's gone. All the initial kindling is gone. We've got the larger tinder burning and down here we've got the fuel, the logs burning. So this is working really well. I'll let this burn for a few more minutes and then I'll watch as I close this handle and see how that works as far as uh, keeping the fire going. But at this point, uh, we're, we're generating some good heat. I've got my blower going as you can hear. Again, as you can see, completely smokeless. My wife loves the smell of a campfire, but not always in the house. All right, this is looking really good. It has been uh, 25 minutes exactly. I've been uh, making some quail eggs for breakfast and uh, some homemade uh, wheat toast. So while well, well, I've been waiting for this to warm up, so I'm just going ahead and it's ready for me to just tie it off for the day, at least for, for a while. I'm going to go ahead and just put another piece of wood on there and it is done for the morning. I'm going to clean up a little bit and this fire is good to go. Well, I'm done with my breakfast and it's been 55 minutes since we started this fire. You can see that it's doing really well. I've got the damper all the way in, so full oxygen intake. We haven't dampered it off yet. You can see the log that I put in on top is being burned by the hot coals down below. This seems to generate a lot of really hot coals and a lot of heat with uh, very little wood. So we use about six to eight pieces of wood a day to, burn, to heat the entire house with this 15 inch stove. So that log in there to give you an idea is about 12 inches long, maybe 11 inches long. This seems to be a really good method to heat the house, minimize the amount of wood needed, and as you can see, it's still 100% smoke free. This is LDS Prepper reminding you, if you are prepared, you shall not fear. Hopefully this little video on how to build a smokeless fire in your home will help you have an enjoyable and warm winter.